Mr. Scott, I believe you're uh, standing in for Mr. Wolf tonight. I am trying. If you could uh, take attendance, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Wolfright. Here. Uh, Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Dursa. Here. Mr. Strobel. Here. Mr. B. Scott. Yeah. Mr. Wolf. Uh, Mr. Ratkin. Here. Ms. Olson. Here. Olson. Mr. J. Scott. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Scott. All righty. <clears throat> Procedures for public participation are located inside uh, your, uh, your folder there. Uh, if you do have to address the board, please go, come up to the podium, state your name and address, and you'll be granted three minutes to have a discussion with the board. Um, any uh, agenda edits by any member of the board? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I have one agenda edit to make. Uh, Mr. Under uh, 13, for curriculum instruction uh, at uh, letter C, I assume, um, to um, approve Hayes participation for 6th, 8th, 10th, and 12th grades in 2019 going forward. 6th, 8th, and 10th? 6th, 8th, 10th, and 12th, is that correct, Dr. Cooper? That's correct. Okay. okay. And you know, I, I'm not sure exactly where to add it, but we want to add right now, an adjustment to the activity fees. It's going to be revenue neutral, but we have a proposal coming out of the committee. Um, are you going to do that for extracurricular? Or? Yes. Yeah. So under, under 14. Okay. Yeah. And you also find you have a, a, another edit, uh, 11D. Uh, change in that uh, in that piece. Uh, there will be an executive session following the meeting to discuss personnel and negotiations items. Uh, all right, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just sharing with the board uh, some information on our proposed elementary class sizes for the. 1920 school year, uh, based on where we're at in our current enrollment, uh, you'll see what was included in the packet of information, six, attachment 6 17, number one. Uh, the top section is the current 18 19 school year enrollment. You'll find the bottom section is the 19 20 projected enrollment, and that's basically rolling the current grade levels and progressing them to the next school year. Uh, you will find that um, a, a uh, reduction in a unit in grade two, uh, the, the first current first grade uh, was at 197 as far as their enrollment. Uh, going to the 1920 school year, uh, 204, we'll see the average count with a, instead of the uh, 10 units in 1819 where we currently have to the 1920, there will be nine units or classes, um, which is obviously uh, less one uh, instructional, uh, one teacher. And it still falls well within the guidelines and the recommendations of class sizes of 20 to 24, so as far as our administrative guidelines, grade one through three. You will also find the same or something similar in grade five for the 1920 school year with the uh, <coughs> projection of a uh, 229 compared to the 267 of the current school year in grade five. So that average class size with a reduction of one, uh, one uh, instructional teacher to a 22.9, again, which falls at the lower end of the administrative guidelines. Uh, kindergarten currently uh, it was updated this morning. Uh, you will find listed at 162 under the 1920 school year. It's currently at 167. I do need to share with you that included in that number is the anticipated 30 students, at risk students that uh, potentially qualify for the uh, full day, at uh, risk full day kindergarten program. So that is uh, factored in there. 
So you will find as we progress through the course of the summer, we do anticipate uh, some additional uh, kindergartners registering. However, um, the, the, the three-year data points indicating that we should be around the uh, same number as we currently are um, with uh, 162 plus 29 currently, <coughs> which is around 192 students. Are those exact numbers uh, where they can be placed? The, uh, as, as per the uh, restructuring plan and my uh, summary of findings, it was the uh, two instructional coaches, the addition of the uh, one instructional coach to primary center. So they will uh, be replacing that teacher and uh, the one at the intermediate center. Thank you. Sure. So additionally, Dr. Cooper, I need to uh, kind of ask, um, uh, so you know, the, the instructional coaches um, was the, was the um, outcome of, right, our, so the, the question we had was what was the best use of the resources we had, and the instructional coaches kind of came out on top of kind of squaring away our, our curriculum, getting that all kind of in tune there, so to speak. So. We will have one at each place, right? One at uh, primary, one at intermediate. Correct. Um, the, the plan is for next year at middle school and then a half this year at high school and, um, and a full the year, the year after that, is that? Yes, uh, next year the high school, we were able to um, modify some of the class sizes to be able to add a, for the current resources available, a 0.5 instructional coach where one of the teachers will be 0.5 instructional coach and be teaching half the yeah, 0.5 day. And then for the 2021 school year, as we have our enrollment continue to, uh, that bubble moves up to the high school, out of the middle school, be able to reallocate uh, one of those positions <coughs> that would be available to one in the middle school so that we have an instructional coach at each level, instructional learning coach at each level each one of our buildings along with uh, we currently do have a, a 0.5 technology coach that we utilize at the high school we also have a special education learning coach currently so along those lines then I'm, I'm looking at next year's fourth grade is going to have at the very lowest level of our our guidelines 22.1 kids in that per class in that fourth grade um, so you could, in theory, take another teacher out of that grade to utilize it, uh, either as get our coaches up to speed, or if that's not possible because that coach doesn't have the, that person doesn't have the skill set for that. Um, you know, is, is that the best use of that teacher? I guess is my, is my is my question. Um, you know, in, in, you know, we could even that be, we could even add a third full day kindergarten class. Um, as opposed to that um, really low level. Uh, at, at this point, um, I mean, we continue to get some registrants. So I mean, I would, I would hesitate. Albeit, we would have to have an increase of um, <clears throat> 20 students in fourth grade uh, in order to bring us to the. Or even more than that, just to the middle middle of the road of the uh, of what our admin uh, guidelines are. Yeah, if, uh, if you look historically, I mean, uh, honestly, I um, I mean, there's, you're you're right, you're correct. We we could get some students coming into the district, um, but historically, I I'd say you're more likely that we would actually be below guidelines at some point in that class um, than than being above the maximum. Um, if, if you were to do, decrease by one teacher, um, so just you know, that's yeah. just my observation. And as we continue to take a look at our enrollment throughout the uh, course of summertime, we have uh, there is obviously always some flexibility on entry level to kind of see where where we come in at and take a look at our certifications where we need to utilize <laughs> people because that is a K to five certification, K to six certification. Right. Other questions? Thank you.
Anything else on the superintendent's report? Nothing further. Public comment on the um, superintendent report for the elementary staffing, or I should say class size. We'll move on to uh, item six, finance, with a, uh, almost the entire alphabet under, under the uh, wing there. Um, I guess we'll go item by item. If anybody has a question or anything, please stop me. Uh, we have course and credit approval, uh, motion for two tax exonerations, uh, we do have a new, um, I think Myers and Bell is, is new, is that correct? For the workers' comp? The same one, these are uh, broker. Okay. Um, and I think if I, if I look at the, um, uh, <coughs> we've used PSBA in the past and we've gone back and forth with different quotes, correct? Or? Yes. Yeah. We're sticking with CM region. Okay. Uh, we also have, um, Agreement with Access Insurance Company for a blanket accident insurance and mandatory interscholastic sports coverage. Uh, item E is our employee assistance program. Uh, item F, uh, the standards insurance company for uh, employee and, and employer paid life insurance. Uh, motion to approve the 1920 bank depositories. Typical, I think uh, that's pretty much the same, right, uh, Mrs. Haynes? Yeah. Uh, yep. uh, motion to approve the BCIU joint purchasing for trash removal. I had a, que I had a question on that. Excuse me, I had a question on that. Um, the sheet you gave us didn't have any numbers other than I assume that's their price per ton. And the winner had asterisks by all their price, all their quotes. So I don't know what the contract looked like from this year, what the current contract to what we have, what the new contract is going to be cost-wise. Okay. And this is one of the things where, you know, I talked about uh, in the future, I really think we should maybe put out a, our own bid for something like this because BCI, you didn't put anything in there for even a reimbursement for the recycles that get collected out of the school district. And that may be a small number, but the, you know, that's, that's money these bids are leaving on the table that could be coming out of that we could be saving. And um, I just think in the future, it wouldn't hurt to maybe throw our own out and use theirs and see which one comes back. I really think, um, you know, again, I didn't see any raw numbers to, to see how close these bids were. If they weren't even close, I don't know. But, you know, I think anytime you leave dollars on the table, like in a recycling they did an injustice to all the school districts that uh, they did that out to. Nothing we can do about it now, but yeah, I just think it's. Did, did we go through the IU last year for the? We always did. Oh, okay. We had not, I don't remember a time that it happened. Do we, so anyway, we can just get the numbers so we can see what the last time I, I, was. I can, I can get, I, I can get, if you need one of the, the specifics on the bids, I can probably get that for you. Yeah, just to see the amounts. And I like to see what we're at this year, this current contract, to what the new contract prices look like. Do we ever, I mean, are we allowed to go in with the joint and, because are we allowed to pull out of the joint? If, if we're in there for the initial bid, would we, would we actually be allowed to pull out if we went out in our own bid as well? I know at this point we're, I think we're in this one because our we sent our information to them to be as part of this bid, right. and this is through 21. So. Right, but my, my, guess my question is, we can't we can't say, hey, we're in on the group bid, and then all of a sudden change our minds because we got something better. Either we're in or we're not, right? I mean, if we, we go in, I think we need to stay yeah. in until yeah. 21. Right. Well, I think next time we do it, though, you can do the whole level into it. You can bid with the DCIU, and we can do our own bid. And we can in see 21, we can go out and do our own right. Bid. What those numbers look like. Mm -hmm. I do believe we're leaving money on the table. But, but my question is, are we, we can't go out and bid at the same time, right? Yeah. So we, we could say the IU, hey, we changed your minds. And then, you so what, the wouldn't, that, wouldn't that affect the, the group bid? No, you stay with the IU, and then you do your own, and then you see 
where the numbers come in. Because when you do your own bid, you can write some of your own parameters. Like there might be things we want to add in there that the IU is not, like we want to put a recycling rebate in. But, but that would be, we, we wouldn't do that at the same time they're doing the bid. I would, and then see where the numbers come in. Well, I don't see how you could pull out well, if, if you're already in there. We would, we would put our information in to go right. the next time. Right, that's, not, that's what I'm saying. Early I, enough I, so I, we yeah. can see what the pricing is compared. Yeah, I can't see how you could bid simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. No, and then decide whether we're going to so, go one way or right. the other. That was my question. Okay. <clears throat> um, item I is also with BCIU for uh, copy paper. Um, item J is a motion to approve um, our um, uh, bid for the medical and nursing supplies. Uh, item K is the renewal of our PSBA membership. Uh, item L, annual subscription agreement with McGraw-Hill uh, for the Alex uh, beginning <coughs> July 2019 through 2020. Uh, item N, is uh, renewal with uh, ASOP for our um, substitute and absence program. Uh, that is recommended, recommend, recommended by technology, correct? Yeah. Uh, item N, uh, agreement with BCTC for uh, reduced and um, uh, child nutrition program. Uh, item O, um, which I have a question on, is a plan for the uh, auxiliary gym wrestling room project. Um, so my question is, is there, are the private donations already in hand? Uh, no. no. Contingent on us uh, being able to have the internal labor, which is the 500 to actually do the work. Okay. And this, um, is this replacing the current, or is this a replacing the current wall and getting a new competition mat? So most of the labor is taking down the current um, mats and doing painting. Okay. Uh, my other question is: Should we temporarily table this until we have a new AD? It is a time commitment. If it doesn't happen this month, it's probably not going to happen. Okay. <clears throat> Any, any comment from our, our former wrestler? Uh. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, taking a look. I haven't been in that wrestling room. Uh, that, you know, some of the conditions that they are. Was it dated from when you were wrestling? Or no, not quite that long ago. They're why you missing old man. 30 years old. Yeah. But they, they are dated. We can use some uh, refurbishing or updating. Actually, some of the mats along the wall are going to be repurposed for the engine as well to take care of the safety hazard from our basketball playing that's exposed. Okay. Any other questions or no? Mm -hmm. uh, item uh, P is a $500 donation from the Blazer Foundation uh, for Wellness Walkway Primary Center. Uh, item Q except a partial grant for the primary center in the amount of $3,000 from J.P. Mascaro for the Respect Program poster contest. Um, so what's the full cost of the program if that's a partial grant? Ron, do you have that uh, information or is that something we can get on with? If you could have that for the voting one, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, item R is a motion to approve a contract with G.H. Harris for the collection of uh, negative fund balances for food service. Uh, Finance Committee did recommend that at our last meeting. Uh, did everybody have a chance to look at that? Um, basically, I think the only outstanding question that Finance had was if there should be um, a minimum. Th thank you, Mrs. Olson. A minimum before we send that to collections. So maybe Ms. Haynes could. So it's 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 a on a yearly basis at the end of the year. Yes, it's an annual basis. We send out local calls 
once a week to negative balanced families. And beyond that, we send one letter halfway through the year, probably November, December, for Christmas present, to let them know that um, we do have a negative balance. And then we will send a final notice to the parents um, after the school year's over. We're, as soon as this vote is done, we will send a letter to them indicating that if they don't pay by the middle of July, they will be sent to collections. <coughs> The items under, they will also be sent a price sheet for the new collection agency so they understand that if they don't pay that whatever dollar amount they owe, they will be tacked on on top of that a $16 letter charge. Now we have right now currently, out of the $8,000 outstanding, we have about $480 of items under $10. However, they're given a lot of opportunity to pay. So they should maybe be treated equally, but that's just my opinion. It was the cost curve that was intrusive and cost us more than the agency who ever would give you $10. Well, it's, it's not going to cost us anything. It doesn't cost the district a dime. It's charged to the family. If the family owes $5 and they decide they're not going to pay, they now owe 21 and that $16 goes to the collection agency when they pay, and the other amount comes to the district in full. If they don't pay at the end of the year, we write off the $5 or the amount to $4. Right, we've been writing them off on an annual basis. That's just the way that it's been working because there has been no efforts to collect that dollar amount. So we will set it up in a receivable if it's being sent to collections. It'll sit in a receivable, and then at some point we're gonna have to. But then the question is, is the fee? The only thing that's affecting the district is the five dollars they got. The sixteen dollars is due to GH Harris. I'm sure they're paying GH Harris, right? And then that's they get the, the money 60, from GH yeah. Harris. Yeah, they give us our five. Yeah, they give us our five. So it doesn't come to us until we get the five. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming and they don't charge us until we get no. they don't, they they're don't not even charging $16. us. They're not charging us, they're charging the family. They make their money we never the pay a dime. The district this is no cost to the district whatsoever. And don't let um, the Saints, uh, the Saints uh, example uh, um, have you focusing on five dollars. A lot of the, a lot of the families in the back was money yes. a lot because there's only like um, less than a, uh, maybe fifty of them that are under ten dollars. Uh, no, actually it's less than it's thirty nine that are under five uh, ten dollars. The rest of them, I mean, they go up all the way to two hundred fifty dollars. And they're not getting a percentage. Of and they're not. Money. And yeah, this is not, this is folks that to don't take advantage of free and reduced lunch. The free and reduced is already taken off. Yeah. Those would be separate conversations we have. The reason we have negative balance with free and reduced lunches is because the applicants don't file the application That's on time. Yeah. So in an individual basis, <laughs> those families We'll have a common phone and that's different. Just to explain to them, because they may not be aware of the process. They don't may not think that we're losing money on this because they filed a little late, but I just we'll, we'll kind of promote it a little bit better. But my only comment about the minimum was, you know, you got you got somebody who gets a five dollar bill and they kind of just ignore it or they file it and figure to get to it. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you tackle on the $16 fee, then you got somebody really pissed off coming in saying, it was five bucks, but yeah, they should have had have paid it. Absolutely. But is it worth the aggravation for somebody to come in here and... $8,000 could possibly fund the other half of that partial grant we were just talking about, so I think... Well, no, I mean, that, that, money, that money obviously stays within, within the food service. Right, but um, I'm just saying, as a classic example, there's, I, I think... Oh no, I, I wasn't. I wasn't questioning that. I was questioning the the 240 bucks that's uh, under 10 or under five or whatever. So. And just just so just um, make this clear during the auditing process at the end of the year, I take that eight thousand dollars and it's written off to the general fund, which goes against your fund balance because unless the cafeteria is adding balance has a positive balance. 
I can't write it off against the accounting rules. Right now, we have the Sodexo amount of money, but we're going to be eating away at that every year at 8000 a pop. So just the thought that this does get written off in the past. It's always been the <coughs> general fund. It's always goes against your fund balance because that's just the way that the accounting rules are written. But is that maybe why people aren't paying it because in the past it just kind of went away? Um, they're not paying it because the child shaming laws came in. We went from 3000 a year to $9,000. So your last year, I had wrote off 11000 This year, we're at 8000 which is a little bit better, but it's nowhere near the 3000 that we have been at for years and years. And it's all due to that child shaming law because the child still gets the lunch. There's nothing, no impact on the child whatsoever. So we now have got to do parent shaming. I say you just have to do that. The school year's over. You have pounds. They'll get a letter. They'll get a letter right after you approve the GA tariffs on the 17th. The 18th, those letters will be prepared and ready to go out. And then they will be given to July 17th to pay the bill. And if they do not pay the bill, the whole file goes over to GA tariffs. Here's your $5 example. Yeah. There's <laughs> How much does it cost for a letter? No, they they have to get a very good thing. So it might be $5. I mean, we have till next week to make a decision so you guys can think about it. I think it's the principal, too. I ended up paying $5 this year, but I'm going to pay $10 next year. Uh, any other comments on item R? Uh, item S, uh, typical budgetary transfers. Item T, uh, approval of the 2019 Homestead and, and Farmstead Resolution. Uh, item U, uh, our Forecast 5 Analytics uh, Renewal. Uh, item V, um, the uh, Comprehensive District Level Plan uh, as presented and recommended by CNI. Uh, wonderful reading if you haven't gotten to that yet. <coughs> Sorry. I live there. Um, um, Let me um, just point out that uh, it is a lengthy document um, of which I've skimmed. Um, it is uh, the having it on the, on the agenda as, as stated, um, that is the draft that we will be approving to then be put forth to the public for comment. That we, so we will not, so and that has to be out for comment for 30 days. Um, so for it to be in full effect by the time school starts next year. Um, the draft has to be approved at next meeting, so then we can vote on it at our first voting meeting in October after we've heard any public comment that comes back to us. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Zoltz on that? Uh, item W, uh, approval of uh, disposal of 25 copies of the child care professional. Uh, Sorry, Karen Stevens, but uh, exposing of those. If anybody wants a copy, you can pick it out of the trash before it uh, gets there. Uh, item X, uh, motion to approve our renewal agreement with Tower Healthcare uh, for student medical exams. Uh, the cost of 2200 per, phys per physician. Uh, that takes care of A through X. Uh, any public comments? Alrighty, moving on to item seven, finance. Uh, I've got a motion to approve our 2019-2020 general fund <coughs> budget of $59,973,084. Uh, then item B will be our tax, tax items for the year. Um, oh, lost, my, lost my train of thought here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so at the next meeting, uh, obviously uh, items one through four are pretty uh, standard. Uh, item five is the one that we will need to uh, determine what the millage will be for uh, next year. Uh, any um, board comments on that? <coughs> Seeing none, public comment? Martino, 225 West Walsh Drive, Douglasville. Your agenda says to be determined on the millage. 
have the attachment. Uh, it says that the village will be raised to 31.985, an increase of 3.74%, which exceeds the index. So, which is correct? Be determined. 31.985. Mr. Martino, you know how it works. We will we'll not. The decision won't be, won't be made until next meeting. Uh, obviously, how it works usually is it's announced tonight and voted on next meeting. So you're not even going to discuss it before you vote on it, is what? We, uh, we're still hammering out some stuff in the executive later on today. Right, that would, uh, question. Yeah. If you do decide to exceed the index, memory serves that had to be published that you were using exceptions. That had to be published in a newspaper months ago for the public to review. Do you know the date that was? <clears throat> Mrs. Haynes will look that up for you. I must have missed it, so I'm just curious when it was published. Well, we asked for permission to do that. But it's, it's, it's You'll find Steve asking them to do it and have them done maybe two different things. Because if I'm correct, Mr. Rathian, if that was not published, you can't read it. I would say there's a good possibility that number that you stated you know, um, could be the number based on the budget. Thank you, Mr. Rothkip. Thank you, Mr. Martino. Any other public comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to facilities. Um, item A, uh, I don't, we, we haven't addressed this yet in facilities, it'll be next week. So no, we will have a recommendation, I assume, on I, that? I would assume we have a recommendation. Uh, see why there'd be an issue. So, we know what, we'll have this for facilities. Um, yeah, I have, the, I, I have the whole um, presentation that he has to supply everybody there. I figured it'd be more appropriate to show it there first. And okay. Then. <clears throat> um, the only, you know, and maybe we should get this addressed now while I'm thinking of it, but um, I don't know if Mr. Supers has a comment. I mean, I don't, is there anything with the, us leasing out to an employee, whether that creates any issues or? No, not that I, that's not, I'll, I'll double check with Supers, but I think we already had the conversation with Mr. <coughs> because it's a separate entity and it's over at Birth Road. Okay. Um, item nine programs uh, motion to approve additional targeted support and improvement plan as presented and recommended by the uh, curriculum and instruction um, is that something we're going over or no or is that um, no, we went over it i want to say um, in april's meeting the first time is that okay. correct yeah i believe so and um so this is the this, this is the document okay. that that was uh, created after that. Okay. Uh, item B, motion to accept a $4,000 donation from the Blazer Foundation uh, to assist with our K through two literacy teachers in the teachers in the park program. Uh, item C is to approve uh, the Anti-Defamation League, a uh, new place for hate training for all district and contracted services employees not to exceed $8,000. Uh, any board comments? Public comments? We want item 10. Um, I doubt you have any secretary's correspondence, Mr. I, I don't, not, not tonight. I wasn't prepared. I tried to get it with Rob. Not a problem, Mr. Scott. <clears throat> uh, from the IU, our last meeting, um, as we saw tonight, we did approve uh, bids and, and awarded contracts uh, for trash. Uh, classroom and office supplies, custodial supplies, physical education equipment, supplies, digital media equipment, and technology supplies. Uh, we also did um, uh, extend new three-year uh, terms for several uh, members of the board. 
um, authorized our bargaining unit agreement with the SEIU, Local 668, from July through uh, June of 2022. Uh, approved our Head Start calendar, and um, that's pretty much the highlights for the IU from that last meeting. Um, BCTC did Mr. Wolf. I assume Mr. Wolf went to the last meeting and is not here. So we'll move on to um, the city board since they're out of class. Anything under legislative? Uh, there's been no change in what I reported last time regarding the budget. We're still anticipating the budget being done on time. And all those <coughs> money that I sent were being allocated. I've not heard any changes to those allocations as of yet. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Grosso. Any public comment on uh, those items? Item right, 11, personnel, various uh, resignations, retirements, leaves. Um, we are going to be have a recommendation for a new athletic director coming to us, I would assume. That's correct. Okay. Uh, then we have our teachers in the park uh, items being approved, the ESY, uh, new extra, uh, all these head coaches will have names in them by then, I assume? Yes, in the process of uh, finalizing the interviews. Okay. Um, Can I just say something? And I won't say too much. I'll let you mention the name, but the uh, head soccer coach for the boys resigns. How come he's not on here? Is it just, I'm just happy to know that. Yeah, not, maybe not. Was that a previous presentation? I He gave it two weeks ago. Oh, really? I thought it was true. It wasn't in May. Yeah, I don't know the facts. I thought it was last month. I mean, I could look back on the oh, I, I, Okay. Maybe I could be, I'd be wrong. That's not a big deal. I just, yeah. I was surprised when I heard it. Okay. Uh, I, I do have a couple questions about item D, so that's our edit. So we're looking to approve an increase of $5 per hour to our wellness coordinator. What is our wellness coordinator currently making? was uh, 20, and it's all funded by the Plants County Area Wellness Foundation. Well, I, I, regardless, that's a 25% increase? Um, can we have a, I mean, I know we've improved, approved all this stuff over the year, but can we get a list of exactly what our wellness grant has done this year? I can't do my hand out. So if we if we increase that by five dollars an hour, how much is that taking away from what the money could be used for? It's actually not. What happened was uh, we were able to reallocate um, uh, some even uh, additional money was originally put in for uh, salary for that position for even year two. Over the course of the two years, uh, there was even more money allocated for salary. So some of that was readjusted and went back into the program or the grant when it was resubmitted or rewritten in year two. If you like, we can have uh, her come to the next meeting and she can give an overview of what I just handed out of all the wellness activities that happened this school year. Uh, a lot happened at all the various different schools and all the wells with staff. So maybe uh, we can ask Mrs. Thompson if she can come and give that same report. It was PowerPoint. What does the board think about that? That way, at least you know, just, you know doing stuff. Uh, we don't see that on a regular basis because we're not in the building, but uh, there is a lot of stuff going on, so I think it's a good, good report to, to have. Okay. I guess that would be good to see. Uh, it has no impact to the grant funds, right? It's not the dollars that we use elsewhere. 
I'm under the impression it's designated that this funds and that part are designated just for that sound right there. That's correct. And uh, item A is tidying up um, Mr. Small's uh, $1,000 bo longevity bonus that was due to him. Um, any questions on any other on the, any of the uh, personnel items that were listed besides what we spoke about? Public comments? <coughs> Uh, Jerry Pennington, 300 Broadway Drive. Uh, uh, my, my question is about the AD and uh, in particular that and the field hockey coach has left. Um, I have an 11th grader, so it's kind of daughter plays with hockey. Um, since we've been at Boone now, this is going to be our fourth AD. Uh, fourth AD, fourth field hockey coach. One state for one day. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out, like, I have two other kids that are in the district, a nine-year-old and a 14-year-old. Um, I'll be honest with you, I won't let them play sports here in the Florida school um, because of stuff like this. Um, I'm just wondering, like, I mean, when you look at other districts, Wilson, Exeter, Boyertown, Spring Fork, Park Valley, I mean, they don't have that kind of stuff happening. The same AD that's at the school, high school that I went to, he's still there. I mean, I'm just wondering, how do you expect to create some kind of, I don't know, continuity, school <laughs> spirit? Because um, quite frankly, I mean, when this new AD comes in, because I mean, looking at the qualifications, George doesn't have him, so he's not going to be the guy. When the new guy comes in, he's going to bring in a war woman. They're going to bring in their own agenda, right? They're going to take the year that they start and tear down what he did to, to, to fit what they want to do. Then the second year is going to be building on what their plan is and working out the kinks that didn't work in this district. And then the third year will be rolling. My kids will be out of school then. So I'm just wondering, like, I mean, when you when you sit down and look at it and you're doing all this stuff, I mean, I know that field hockey coach she left because it's chaotic. And she, I mean, she got a she got a great job offer, but I mean, you know, I talked to her and I asked, you know, I asked her, I said, you know, what's the deal? And She's leaving because there's no there's no consistency. I'm just wondering, like, I mean, you know, I can't be the only person that feels that way. The kids that play sports and stuff like that. I'm just wondering, you know, I mean, if you guys bring a guy here from Weirtown, I mean, quite frankly, they're not known for their sports. So I'm just wondering, like, you know, what 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 are we, what are we supposed to do here? Well, to partially answer your question, as you know. You know about uh, gosh I'm trying to see when it was uh, uh, eight ten years ago when we cut the post of athletic director right. due to budgetary concerns and we had an assistant AD right. uh, we, we kind of you know went went to uh, kind of into the foxhole Off um, the cliff. well no re re regrouping and, and ever since okay. then we've been trying to rebuild the program uh, we've had some good people in the, in, in the posts Right. Um, you know, and uh, I mean, the list I, of I, people that are leaving is yeah. pretty extensive, I would say. So I, I think what you've, what I've seen is steady progress. Uh, it, it hasn't been, you know, here, there, back up again. It's been right. a so. Right. So, so I, I think we're trying to really get back to. So, so you've stuff. seen steady progress in how in the what time frame? The last four years. I'd say more than that. I mean, so we're, and we're the guy we went from. We, we, we went from having a, a full. I'm, I'm not trying to defend him because yeah. it is what it is. We're, we're looking for a full time uh, athletic director. So Why well, I understand so that. We're, but we're all setting a sports center. Right? I'm very concerned about the sports program. I mean, my daughter is actively participating in other friends. I'm very involved with it. So we're doing things that we're going to try to improve the program. When I added sports manager to help have the middle school and high school programs coordinated, if you're right, we need to go from the bottom up. Right. And that's something well, that we're doing. I, I hear what you're saying, but we tried to do that last year when they wanted to go into the pack and everybody shot it down. Because they do that. You don't need a sports manager. They automatically do that. Well, I'm not sure that everybody shot it down. It was never well, that was, yeah. in. It, but it was Well, it was, it was, we asked questions and all of a sudden, it went, I think it was pulled. There's a lot of so, just joining the pack and, and, and you know, there's some sports that would have been left out. So it wouldn't have been fair to 
certain kids in certain sports because of that didn't offer the sports. So a lot went into that decision. Uh, factual information is travel times wasn't accurate when it came to the pack of Burke's leagues. I, I did that research myself. And, um, so a lot of thought went into the pack and it would be fair to the students that participated in the two sports that were no longer offered in the pack. So kids were lost out. I sat down with Dr. Cooper at length. I had concerns. I'm a coach here in the district. I've been a coach in the district for 12 years. Um, I obviously had some concerns. Uh, I had a very good relationship with Mr. Schmidt and liked working with him. I sat down with Dr. Cooper. I, I think it was a very good meeting. I grilled him. I wanted to get his opinion on things. Um, and I understand the school district is looking for somebody full time to take care of a lot of the problems that we haven't been able to take care of since we let the full time person go several years ago. So I think it's a not a personal step in the right direction because obviously I like Mr. Schmidt, but I think for a program wise and school district wise, getting a full time AD back on the books and working with our other programs like the middle school, building them up. I think it takes them to, to the level we should be at. And I think currently we would get there with the setup. And again, that's not anything on Mr. Schmidt. No, I, I, I'm not I'm not to defend him right. in particular. I'm, I'm just saying the structure. The, the, the structure of the whole thing is like, you know, I mean, like I said, it's it, that structure breakdown of what's going to happen is, is what's going to happen. You know, so if I, like my, my 11th grader now is going to, is going to, you know, we don't have a coach, so the whole, the whole entire summer stuff that we were going to do is not going to be done. So then we won't get started until August, so then we'll already be behind. And then, you know, the program overall with the new AD is going to be restructured and then buttoned up and then on the, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, I, I understand, you know, like the two sports, but, you, you know, I don't know what the other number of sports is. And I'm not saying to go down to the pack because I, I, I live down there, I, I'm from there. And I don't think we compete in that, but um, structure-wise, if that's what you're looking for, I mean, it, that, that's that's irrelevant. And the unfortunate part is that it takes a long time, and I, I hear where you're coming from, and I, there's the validity to what you're saying. But we have it takes a long time to build back what other people took away. No, we I, can I, only I, do I, it in baby yeah, steps, and, uh, and, and and you know, your kid might be in that that you know donut hole where it, it gets right. sick, but like. For everybody else coming up, we have to fix what's taken away. Right. Okay. Okay. That gives an opportunity for that person that ends up getting hired to have a plan together. It could be accelerated. Yeah, no, I, there's listen, I'm, I'm all There's a probability, I mean, probability, but there's also a possibility I mean, that we could grab 100 days and then 60 days to accomplish a lot. So, right. Yeah, no, listen, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I hope that happens and, I, and I'm optimistic that's going to happen. I'm just saying, like, you know. You know, I, like I said, I have a nine-year-old. He's, he's going to be in fourth grade. So I'm just hoping that by the time I, I'm in 11th grade, I'm not up here going, listen, we had three more. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Like, you know, I understand that for my junior or, or you know, soon-to-be junior or whatever, you know, it is what it is. And, 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 and you know, it's our responsibility to, to do outside stuff for that kind of stuff. But I'm just saying for my nine-year-old, you know, you know, just if we could – kind of maybe keep somebody here as long as we possibly could. That's, that's all, uh, you know. Mr. Pennington, just be, be assured that um, you're not a single voice, even though maybe in this, in this room right now you are the single parent that came forward to say something. You know, um, this isn't the first time I'd say that most of the board members have heard something along these lines. We are, we are trying to fix something that, um, was a long time being broken, <laughs> and uh, um, um, not, and not everything of the last two years was broken. And we would like to try our best to hold on to the parts that worked and fix the things that um, didn't work. As far as far as having a full time person, having a little bit more continuity. Um, part of having continuity is having um, more clear expectations of the coaches. Those are some of the things that um, a full time person in charge and a sports manager will bring. And um, and we hope to resolve some of those issues, but we got to you know got to take bites one at a time, I guess. All right. Thank you for your time, guys. Yep. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Right, we're going to enrollment. Uh, numbers are cash for your pleasure. Uh, any public comments? Uh, Curriculum instruction, Mr. Olson. We got the pays. 
and then maybe some of something else. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm clearing my microphone, but I don't need. Um, so um, our meeting was right before this one, the six o'clock today. Um, we um, we had a long list of things to discuss, but they really were all. Um, kind of rolled, except for two things, they were all kind of rolled into our review of the comprehensive plan, which again is attached um, and long. Um, um, if anybody wants to read it and have some questions for both the administration and for me um, by next meeting, next week's meeting, before we vote to take that draft um, out to the public for comment. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, that, that comprehensive plan. Um, not just administration, but administration, teachers, uh, parents, students, um, stakeholders in the community, um, our, our landscaping people, our, um, our bus drivers were there um, having some buy-in on this comprehensive plan. So um, the two other things that we did uh, discuss other than that were the AATSI update, which was listed for review under it was attachment number 20 under uh, 9a which is the um, uh, additional targeted support and improvement um, specifically at this point for the high school and then we will be rolling it back to other grades that is am i wrong on that dr cooper i'm sorry no it's okay um the um a tsi plan um, is currently focused on um, making those changes in the high school and then will be rolled back to um, to younger grades. As, as part of that plan is a, a piece of an MTSS or multi-tier support system structure where okay. we're in the process of building backwards and it kind of right. forced our hand to do so um, as a result of some um, data to indicate that we need some improvement yeah. in a particular subgroup of our population. And we did discuss it and we discussed what was going into the ATSI, the broad strokes of it. Um, in a previous meeting, I believe it was April's committee instruction committee. Committee, curriculum and instruction committee. Um, the only uh, outstanding thing was to discuss the pays. Um, our, our, um, our recommendation from the, from the discussion we had, we had, we had no members of the public come out um, to say that they were concerned about doing the um, city survey. Um, and uh, I, I have received no, no correspondence from anyone, and um, the administration had not indicated that they had either. We, we discussed some of the previous concerns. Um, I have a copy of the 2017 specific uh, Berks County pays um, uh, results sitting in the back of the room for people to review if they would like. Um, where the preamble of that discusses in detail how they um, how they uh, preserve students' um, anonymity and how they allow for either parents specifically to um, opt their child out or for students to opt out the day of if that's what they choose to do or even just opt out of a single question. Um, I have any concern. Um, so our, our recommendation was the, the survey is available for um, even grades 6, 8, 10, and 12. And our recommendation would be for us to start doing all four in the 2019 school year. And now um, open to questions. Hearing none. That's all we discussed. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Mrs. Olson. Uh, extracurricular, we have uh, Mr. Miller, and I believe uh, you have activity fees and maybe something else for our, our enjoyment. Uh, I, I assume that there's no public comment on. Oh, my apologies. Thank you. Public comment on uh, anything from Mrs. Olson? No, nope. too late. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, we met. Um, on May the 15th, we talked about the uh, proposal for the auxiliary gym, which we uh, had something happened previously. Um, we also talked about activity fees. We've been bashing about activity fees and whether they could be reduced and how we could actually encourage people to participate in the second 
sports, where we have very few people that are, are taking advantage of that. The proposal that we're bringing forward is to keep the high school fee, the initial fee at $100, raise the middle school fee $200, and do away with the rest of the fees. That's a couple of things. It encourages participation in multiple sports, and it also uh, reduces some of the paperwork and headaches that occur collecting the fees. So $100 across the board for every everybody? Correct. Yep. Okay. Would that still be a cap? Yes, it would still be a cap. The oh, current, yes, the current cap stays. And it, Wait, it, how, many, how many students does uh, Mrs. Albert have in the, in the I have four. four. <laughs> so maybe we should make it 400 as yes, the cap. Yeah, <laughs> One of them is old enough. And the reduced lunch still applies at that point, make it $30. Yeah. We talked about the sports manager position had been approved, and it will be uh, interviewing will begin, and then it starts with the new school year. And we're still confident we can get some money for that. that we have at least one very good candidate. The championship banners from last year, it's my understanding they've been ordered. We're still waiting for them to come in. We begin doing that county championship in softball and bowling in 2018. Still waiting to see the banners. We could actually add a division softball championship this year as well. Yeah. At the spring season recap, and, uh, uh, an item, we had a facilities tour, which was quite uh, uh, disappointing, actually. The locker rooms are in terrible shape, but, that's what, but something needs to be done. But, but, I mean, there's actually, uh, the, the tiles are destroyed, there's leaking water, there's, it's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, and uh, lastly, we talked about the, the, the new requirements for a full-time athletic program. Any <coughs> questions for Mr. Miller? Any public comments? Okay. Move on to facilities. Mr. Durso, I, I don't think you have a report, but maybe there's something that... Uh... Well, as you know, I was not at that meeting due to my other job. I believe I'm not putting you on a spot. Did you run the facilities meeting for me? Uh, actually, Mr. Wolf did. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I did not get an update from, uh, from that meeting. So I do not have you. I'm trying to... I, I think we... Whatever was at the last meeting was taken care of. Ready? Right? Anything ring a bell, Miss Miss Haynes? Yeah, we're good, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Next meeting for facilities actually is on Monday coming up. Yes. Yep. <coughs> Any public comment on facilities? Right. Move to finance, <coughs> uh, which actually happened uh, last <coughs> week. Right. Mr. Wolf's not here. Mrs. Haynes, anything? Finance that we need to know about? No, just, just the errors. Right. Um, that just, that's the only thing that came out of the finance committee meeting was the GA chairs. And the change in the uh, health consortium. Yeah. That was the only two things that we talked about. I think everybody, everybody should have got that email. Is 4% 4, 4 was the. Uh, yes, yeah. And there was 180,000 reduction in the budget. That's yeah. it. And then the 75,000 we already knew about, which was for Halter. Added, well, well, good news. I added the, I added the 8500 for the wrestling nets. So that was already added in there, so that cost. <coughs> Any uh, other board comments on finance? Any public comments? All right, Mr. Scott, policy review? So I, too, was not at the last meeting, so I'm going to pass it over to Julia. Give her a review. Hi. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Olson. Hi. Um, so we, we didn't take, there was nothing at first reading um, at the time. We had, uh, we read over three old business policy changes, 210, 251, 616, uh, all, um, all changes were just to, to be in line with um, current Vocabulary and uh, and requirements under under Pennsylvania Education State Law. Um, what I don't know is if either of those if any of those three are read, are should be at first <coughs> reading for next week. If Mr. Hurley might know. Yeah, um, we definitely we definitely want to move policy two ten medications over. Right. Consolidating the forms that we're using for medications. Correct. So, so that one definitely does need to be moved over. Um, I would also move policy 
Yeah, okay, so that was not an edit I suggested at the beginning of the meeting. Do I have to make a motion to do that? Or will they just make that change in the voting meeting? So we would want to have policy 210 and policy 616 be so, at first reading. So they'll be first reading for the voting meeting? Yes. So then they actually wouldn't they, get, they wouldn't go into effect. They won't go into effect because to till, till August. Correct, yeah. but, it, but we would like... The, that's why we we're talking about pushing those forward. And like I said, it's 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 to get those policies. So before the school, be before consistent. next year for the school year, we're going to right, get them yeah. consistent with the language cons contained in uh, state state laws and regulations. So. Alrighty. Is that it, Ms. And we, did, and we did cut the meeting short. Yes. Uh, committee of one. Um, any other board questions for Mrs. Olson in place of Mr. Scott? Any public comment? Mr. Strobel, Technology Committee? Yeah. Um, the uh, telecom provider update, um, Ireton uh, Partner uh, Services. <coughs> apparently Is your microphone on, Mr. Strobel? I'm sorry. Thank you. Not on. It is now. Telecom provider update, Ireton uh, partner of Service Electric. Um, so we look, we're looking for about a 30 percent reduction right now. As far as we're concerned, we're still waiting for one last bit from Zeta. Um, but 30 50 percent right now is uh, kind of nice piece there. Um, my learning and frontier education platform, we just got a status update. It's approved at a Friday kickoff meeting, and the deadline to have everything online was to uh, start the school year. Um, Student information system migration. Um, they had a review with all the stakeholders, and um, all the feedback was good. So they're hoping for a proposal in August. And then website hosting redesign. Um, there's no changes um, to the stage development, and there will be, uh, there will be an August rollout at that point. Um, the one-to-one -one learning initiative. Um, at the time we were there, it was a great report uh, <coughs> in terms of damage. Uh, there's very minimal damage this year. Um, any, there's two crack screens. Um, there's a review of maybe the case they come in, how well was with the, the, the steel soft. Did, did they review the uh, effectiveness of the senior prank? They reviewed the effectiveness of the senior prank, yes. <laughs> um, the, um, at the time of the meeting, there was about 50% collected, but I believe that's collected now. Get back on June 24th for the students that are over the summer and the facilities, the uh, middle school facility I had were uh, migrated during that meeting time. Um, no informational changes for document storage and email migration was starting this week um, with the new interface to Gmail. And we're, we're still going to have a Combined report with CNI and technology as far as the iPads. Oh yeah, um, I, I apologize. When um, when we were setting up the um, agenda for CNI, um, Mr. McKnight and I spoke about that, and he, he felt that um, since school only ended Friday, um, that that he's he he'll, he'll be ready to do that in August instead of uh, doing it. Right, the postmark right away after school year, and then they wanted to just do it right. So. Fair enough. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Strobel on any of his reports? Public comment? Technology? Transportation, Mrs. Albright? Yeah, I've officially been absorbed by the facilities committee. So I have nothing absorbed. to report. Hmm. Was that is that a hostile takeover? Uh, I think not. They will take over. <laughs> <laughs> she wants the chair. I'll surrender the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to her. Could use some additional policy uh, reviews. Yeah. Um, I'm already on it. How um, how's Casey making out with uh, getting up to speed there? Are we finally going to save, save a few dollars, maybe? 
I'm looking forward to hearing that. <laughs> okay, so we can just uh, strike the technology, uh, or the, sorry, the transportation committee. Um, any public comment on the loss of our uh, transportation committee? Uh, old business uh, approving minutes for the voting meeting. Um, any comments on that? Right. Any new business from any board members? Hearing none, any public comments on anything at all? Hearing none, I'll make a motion for adjournment. So make a move. I entertain a motion for adjournment. Sturzo, second by Ms. Solison. Being officially over. Eight something. 838.